and it was quite a while since my last video on things connected to Raspberry Pi, Kstars and Indy. Reason was that uh, we also saw some issues with the supply of Raspberry Pis and also some issues with updates of Kstars. However, Raspberry Pis are available again. We have uh, a new class of Raspberry Pis, the Raspberry Pi 5, which comes with a major number of updates and also a new operating system that is based on Debian Bookworm. However, this brings some issues. Number one is that Astroberry in its current version does no longer run on a Pi 5 and that also many of the repositories of KStars and the Indy server are related to a older version of the Raspberry Pi OS that is based on Debian Buster. The problem is Debian Buster is no longer available because it was already superseded by Debian Bullseye and it does not work on many of the newer Raspberry Pis. So what I'm going to introduce is how to compile a topical version of KStars at Indy using a fantastic set of scripts and how to run KStars and Indy in standalone mode on a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 5. You need a few things for that. Number one is you need a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 with at least 4 GB of RAM. And I also recommend using an external NVMe SSD disk instead of the well-known SD cards. Let's take a look. So here's what we need for setting up a Raspberry Pi 4. We need at least 4 GB of RAM. We need a fast SSD disk and a short USB free cable to connect to the USB disk. We also need as an option, a temperature compensated real time clock and a house with a fan. Okay, so we do have here um, the Raspberry Pi imager, and we need to use Debian Bookworm. So we can either choose that one and choose our storage, or alternatively, we can also install Ubuntu Desktop 23. The older ones are not intended for use with the Raspberry Pi 5. However, I would strongly suggest sticking to Raspberry Pi OS and writing that image the SSD card. Once the image is written, you can boot Raspberry Pi OS you need to connect to your local wireless and run the Raspi config tool. These steps are pretty similar to earlier releases. You can set here host name interfaces and so on. I have not set the proper keyboard here yet, but yeah, this is pretty much standard. There's one important exception here. Raspbian Bookworm or Raspberry Pi OS based on Debian Bookworm does not use X11, but Wayland. So this window management system is more modern, but two important components for this project don't work with Wayland. The number one is real VNC viewer does not work with Wayland. Number two is that also KStars has problems with Wayland. If you enable VNC server in the settings here, you automatically disable Wayland and enable X11. 
if you choose not to enable the VNC server, you have to do this manually in Raspberry config. And of course, you have to set all of your local settings, your time zone, your keyboard, and so on. Raspberry config has not changed much. Part of its functionality is also available via the graphical user interface. Still, there's not everything there, so it makes more sense to stick to the old Raspberry config tool. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm enabling all the interfaces. Above all, I need to enable I2C because we need to use a real-time clock here. And again, I need to emphasize that you must not try to run this from an SD card. I tried it and the performance of the SD card and read write access simply does not match the computing power, especially in the case of the Raspberry Pi 4 or 5. Another thing is, again, you need four gigabytes of RAM, otherwise the following steps will not work. You need a short cable to connect the NVMe SSD card to the Raspberry Pi. This could also lead to problems. And you need a powerful uh, supply, for, especially for supplying the Pi 5, which goes up to 5 ampere. But that should also solve many of the brownout problems people have witnessed in the past. Also remember to install a 64-bit operating system. Otherwise, you will not be able to use the compilation scripts that follow. Here comes the real deal. A guy named Dushan has set up a repository on the Gitea Nuspiro space slash nu astrosoft build. And this repository contains two scripts which allow you to compile KSTARS and Indie server in a recent version. And this works for multiple operating systems if they're 64-bit. First, you need to copy the repository using Git. And you can always easily copy and paste by using Ctrl-C and Ctrl-Shift-V in the terminal. And here I'm cloning the Git into the Raspberry. I change to the uh, directory Astrosoft build and I run a first script where I'm installing all the necessities for running KSTOS. This takes a while, I've shortened that. After installing all this, you can run a second script, which is called buildsoftstable.sh. On a Pi 4, you can run this overnight, more or less. Again, if you have less than 4 megabytes, you will fail here because there's not enough memory to run that. I've shortened that as well because it really takes a few hours, actually. On the other hand, it runs without problems and it also works on the Ubuntu version for the Raspberry Pi. And then you have KSTARS available, you have an Indie server up and running, and you can do whatever you used to do when using KSTARS, when using ECOS, or when using an Indie server. Next, we want to use as a full featured platform a real-time clock. And this has not changed much for the Pi 4. I'm using here the instructions from pimalifeup.com slash raspberry pi rtc. And I bought a very simple DS3231 board from Amazon. This is temperature compensated, so that makes sense. Next, we want to add an access point 
and have an independent wireless network. And this has changed a lot in Bookworm. RaspberryPiTips.com access point setup Raspberry Pi is an excellent intro how to set up a wireless access point in Bookworm. I'm simply, again, copying the instructions from the page using Control C and Control Shift V into the terminal, so don't have to type that much. This is way more simple than what we had before using DNS mask and host APD. So there is definitely an advantage when switching to the last Raspberry Pi OS. Of course, you need to choose the proper identifier for your wireless, but that is pretty much everything you have to do with it. And you also have some sort of a rudimentary user interface called NMT UI, where you can edit the properties of your hotspot afterwards. And that's also new. That was not there in the older releases of Raspberry Pi OS, like the ones based on Bullseye and Buster. And this is it, more or less. You have a real-time clock. You have an independent wireless. You can turn this on and off easily. And that's all you need for a standalone solution. So now we can simply start an Indie server and activate the hotspot on the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm having here the settings for my good old Canon 1000D. Go to the devices. Open up the appropriate driver, the Canon CCD driver it is. And as usual, it is a little bit cumbersome to address DSLR because you have to enter the appropriate parameters for the CCT beforehand. That's why I'm opening up that page on the right where I can get all these. I set the parameters and I can take an image. It's not a very nice one, it's just my desktop and I did not make any efforts to focus on something, but this is it. So now I have an indie server up and running. And of course, now as I can activate the hotspot here, I can also address this indie server over the network. So here I am still in case does. And now I'm doing a remote access from my desktop Ubuntu computer. But of course, this also works with Windows or Mac OS. It's just an indie server running. So again, I go to the devices. I connect to the hotspot of the Raspberry Pi 4. And instead of starting a local indie server, I'm just plain connecting to the Indie server running on the Raspberry Pi. And again, I can take an image. It takes a little bit longer to receive that image over the wireless, but as a matter of fact, I have now access to the Indie server on the Raspberry Pi 4. Again, not a very beautiful image, but you know, it works the same with a nice object. If you want to run in the server only, there's no way of compiling this at the time being, but you can simply boot into headless mode on the Raspberry Pi and use a little script to start up your in the server there. Should work as well. And now for the Raspberry Pi 5. Way more faster with 
a dedicated PCIe interface, an on-off switch, and a real-time clock. And this is, aside from the speed up, another huge advantage. And fortunately, setting up things with Raspberry and Bookworm is not much more complicated. It's just faster. So here we have again the minimum requirements. We need four gigabytes of RAM, a five ampere power supply, and a SSD card. The only difference is that we also have to crank up the current limit on the USB. That is a feature that is only available on the five. And we may need a backup battery for the RTC, which I don't have yet. And finally, I have two little gadgets. As the Pi 5 is quite powerful, we can install OpenPHD guiding following the instructions given on the OpenPHD guiding site for building OpenPHD on Linux. So if you go there and follow the instructions, you're able to compile OpenPHD and at least in the first trial, it runs perfectly fine. And the other thing is Fire Capture, a software for rapid acquisition of planetary images mainly. And this one comes from firecapture.de with a ready-made image for Raspbian. You just download this. You start the archiver on your download directory to install this Debian Raspbian package and then you have fire capture available and that's a quite neat package and i think that this setup is also really suitable for running a full controlled computer system for astrophotography have fun and we'll see